Hello, everyone. I'm Matt Clark, research analyst for Money Markets, and joining me as he does each and every week from the thrilling vistas of Peru in South America is Greens on Fortunes co Charles Sizemore, who had a very interesting weekend uh, in Peru. If you uh, read the headlines, you know about uh, a couple of earthquakes there. Charles and his family, fortunately, all all okay. Everything is all, all is well uh, in Peru. So, Charles, welcome. Uh, glad uh, glad you could join us this week uh, for another episode of Investing with Charles. Good to be here. Uh, glad to see that. Um, well. I'm alive. We'll start with that. <laughs> yeah, take the, take the, every take day's the an adventure. Win first. It just take the easy win first, right? <laughs> well, today, I, I, you know, I want to get into uh, something interesting. In addition to uh, uh, earthquakes in, in Peru, another uh, big thing coming out uh, over over the last weekend uh, was apparently a new variant of the COVID nineteen. Uh, uh, virus, uh, and this one was discovered uh, and became predominant in, in Southern Africa, South Africa, and Namibia, Mozambique. Uh, it is it is spread uh, to uh, include now parts of Europe, including the Netherlands and Belgium and Germany. Uh, nothing so far here in the United States, at least not as of this recording, so cross your fingers. That, that, um, that we know of. That we are aware of as of yet. Um, but it, it just seems like that, you know, you know we keep seeing these variants and, and, and these new mutations of this coronavirus and uh, obviously, it sparked fear in the markets the Friday after Thanksgiving and during a shortened trading day, as as uh, you know, the market indices plummeted two percent and, and more uh, in one day, marking the worst day uh, of of the year for the markets. Um, but I, I think a larger question persists here, and that is, as we see these variants come out, and we're in the holiday season, and and, and there's you know more and more family gatherings and things like that planned, people coming together, uh, vaccinated or otherwise, there's always going to be this threat uh, of, of, of getting this new variant of, of the vaccine. And, and now we've seen countries that are shutting back down again uh, with, uh, you know, Germany among, amongst them, you know, Im- implementing travel restrictions and closing parts of the country, Austria, uh, the Czech Republic as well. Um, you know, and this is something that leads me to our topic today. And that is during the coronavirus pandemic at the height in 2020, um, you know, no one was, entertainment was kind of a, you know, was non-existent. There was no, no live sports. Nowhere to uh, go. There, <laughs> there, was, there was nowhere to go. You were pretty well stuck at home. And we saw the rise of Netflix, Disney Plus, Hulu, um, Amazon Prime, these streaming services that allowed us to take in entertainment without leaving the comfort of our home. Um, and then, you know, obviously, as we come into 2021, something interesting happens. AMC Entertainment, which is a, a large theater chain, uh, not just here in the U.S., but also with with uh, chains a- in Europe, um, shot up in Peru, I might add. And in Peru. Yes. Uh, no, I, th- shot uh, up- I may be wrong about that. That may be Cinemark. Never mind. Strike that from the record. <laughs> Nonetheless, uh, AMC, uh, it, you know, its stock price jumped massively as it became a Wall Street bets uh, Reddit uh, meme stock, and, and and we saw it jump, uh, you know, hundreds of percent higher than it's uh, than how it's how it came in out of 2020. So I guess my question today, and what I want to look at today, is comparing uh, a stock like AMC, uh, which is now starting to see theaters reopen, it's starting to get customers back in seats, but now we have this threat of uh, a possible uh, additional variant that could uh, put a wrench in things for AMC. Upset the uh, against, uh, Yeah, exactly. Against against Netflix, which is kind of in that tried and true, steady, eddy kind of streaming service that uh, is actually the largest streaming service uh, in the world, if I understand right. Uh, it is global. It, it reaches everywhere. Millions and millions of people uh, own, you know, buy Netflix subscriptions and watch uh, TV, movies, things like that. So I want to compare these two. And, and first, I want to get to something kind of interesting. I, I found this data. It was a study done by Hub Entertainment Research back in July of 2021. And it, it asked the question, basically, of how do people expect to watch movies in the new year? And this was after the pandemic had quelled obviously in July of 2021, kind of after we had kind of seen a flattening and uh, vaccines rolled out and, and people are getting, uh, people are getting you know, vaccinated and, and, and you know, everything is, is seemingly returning to normal. Interestingly enough, 29% of those who responded to the survey said they would still uh, mostly stream movies at home. Now, 27%, so relatively close, said they would mostly go to the theater. 20% said they would kind of do both. And 24% said they wouldn't do either. They won't stream at home or go to the movies. So kind of an interesting so what, breakdown. What are they doing? People... Sitting at home playing checkers? I don't quite 
could quite quite know what to make of that one, but uh, you know, it's it, it's I, I maybe just finding uh, entertainment elsewhere outside of turning on the TV or, or that, going that out. Doesn't to exist. Well, I don't, in some circles, it I'm, does. I'm very confused. I don't. I don't. I mean, do they have like books and stuff? I mean, how, how does that work? Reading? Well, I don't. I don't know <laughs> about that. I, I, is that making a comeback? I'm not sure. But nonetheless, um, it does. You know, it does kind of speak to uh, you know our. Uh, you know, wanting to be entertained, but yet still being conflicted on exactly the best way to do it. So how does this, how, how does this kind of impact, uh, you know, AMC, a, a, a company that is known for providing its theater entertainment compared to Netflix, which really wants you to stay at home? Well, let's back up for, for a second. Let's go back to the variant for a second and, and why this one is potentially scary. And it really comes down to one thing. There's going to be new variants. There's always going to be new variants. A variant by itself is not necessarily a problem or you know, anything to panic about. It, it comes down to whether this particular variant is going to evade the vaccines or not. If it blows through the vaccines, it just blows right through them, then we're right back to square one. And that's, that's scary. That's why the market sold off so badly uh, that, you know, uh, the day of Thanksgiving. Uh, if it turns out that this variant, while it is a little bit different than the others, it, it's not, you know, it, it's, it doesn't blow through the vaccines worse than say the Delta variant does, then you'll probably see things, you'll, you'll see people cool off, you know, relatively quickly. Uh, the reason everyone's kind of panicking or, or, or certainly was at, right after the news hit was we just don't know yet. And it's going to be probably another couple of days until we do. So uh, we're all sort of, you know, fingers crossed, wait and see mode. Now, uh, back to the theaters. So there's, there's a couple of things going on. You know, streaming, I, I, I stream a lot of content on Netflix, on Disney. It, it's, it's, it's almost hard not to these days. Um, I don't even have cable. I, I, I don't even I don't, I don't even know what's on network TV anymore. Cable. I just you know most of the content I watch I stream. Um, interestingly, though, in in my own kind of anecdotal experience here matches what the data shows. And the data the data shows that about eighty five percent of minutes streamed. You know, eighty five percent of the streaming being done it is not movies, it's actually series, it's shows, you know, uh, you know, Netflix is the master of like the, the eight part mini series or the 10 part mini series. Like that's, that's really a good uh, format for them. And, and for Disney as well, um, Amazon's kind of getting there. So what people watch when they stream for the most part is they watch series or programs that they don't, they stream movies, but, but less about 15% of the streaming they do is movies. So that's that actually is really good for AMC because it implies that movies are still a, a distinct product, a distinct thing. And what we've seen, and this was already happening before the pandemic struck, the nature of movies is, is, is changing. Movies used to be a cheap, cheap night out. You know, you just pay a couple bucks, you, you go sit in your seat, you eat your popcorn and you, you kill two hours and you go home. It, it's really gone more upscale now. You know, now you can go to a lot of movie theaters and order a beer, and not just a beer, like a craft beer, a nice beer. You, know, you can order a cocktail. Uh, you're not just ordering, you know, stale popcorn. You're ordering really pretty high end dining, right? It's it's you know the chairs you sit in are not just you know the awful movie theater chairs of our youth where you're elbowing the person next to you. I mean, they're like lazy boys that you're reclining in. It's more of an experience and you pay for it, of course. Movie tickets are probably triple what they were when I was a kid. Yeah, you, you pay for the privilege. But what, what, what are the theaters? The theaters are becoming more of an experience. It's, it's, you're getting out of the house, you're, you're sitting in a nice setting, you're getting this immersive experience, with this big screen, this great sound system, a nice drink in your hand. It's, it's really gone upscale. And so this transformation has been going on for years. Um, post COVID, you know, picking up the pieces after COVID, it's only going to accelerate. Yeah, you know, people to get out of your living room, you know, to, to get in, you know, to, to make it worth the trip, it needs to be nice. It needs to be an experience. Otherwise, you are just going to sit in your underwear at home and just, you know, watch it on your big screen. So that's kind of where, where this is going. Now, what does that mean for AMC? Well, that means AMC is going through the same thing all the other theater chains are. They're closing theaters that are past their, you know, their shelf life. They're closing theaters that are not um, up to standard, and they're, they're, they're focusing on the higher end theaters, the, the ones that provide more of that experience. 
So, you know, that's kind of the backdrop. Now, what does this mean, you know, for, for the respective stocks? So in Netflix, you have that quintessential, you know, pandemic stock, that stay at home stock, that I'm closing the windows, closing the doors, not leaving my house. Netflix, Netflix and Amazon were pretty much the stocks of the pandemic, right? Zoom, I guess you could throw that in. Um, AMC was sort of the anti pandemic stock. And it really, um, you know, that, that stock suffered and, and, you know, the company was on the ropes. The company wasn't doing well even before the pandemic. And then it was really on the ropes during, during the pits of the pandemic. And then, you know, it hit bottom and then it became a meme stock and now the rest is history. But, yeah, but where, where do we, where do we go from here? Right. Um, I'll start with AMC. AMC is not a stock I would consider, you know, it's not, not one you should hold forever. You know, this, this is not a buy and hold stock. Like many of the meme stocks, though, I think it is an interesting trade. I think you, know, you can definitely make money on this because its swings are wild. You can make money on the upside. You can make money on the downside. But this is a stock for traders. There's not really, um, I, I would not, it's hard to say it's you know, overpriced or underpriced because <laughs> like, what, what do you compare its price to right now? It has no earnings to speak of and its sales are still really depressed. So it's really kind of hard to assign a multiple. You have to kind of project what sales will be and then compare its price to that. So its valuation is sort of a moving target. But I, I would say if you are kind of bullish on life returning to normal, if you think that um, you know the Omicron variant is going to kind of fade, and it's it's just not going to be that big of a deal, then something like AMC is a nice normalcy trade. I think you know theaters have a future. I think AMC is part of that future. Am I long the stock? No, I'm not. I have no intentions of buying it right now, but I do think it could be an interesting short-term trade. Netflix, on the other hand, really has the wind in its sails. You know, if the pandemic were to just mysteriously disappear tomorrow, just infections go to zero tomorrow, no need to get vaccines, no need to do anything because the virus just mysteriously disappeared off the face of the earth. Are you going to stream less? Probably not. Um, well, hey, yeah. it would be nice to pick up a book now and then and just not watch, not, not watch media content. Sure, of, of course. But realistically, you know, <laughs> I, I do read books, by the way, but uh, but but realistically, you know, we're not going to materially reduce the amount we stream. I mean, I, Netflix really captured this new medium. They, they really pioneered it. You know, Netflix started out as a DVD by mail company, and then they really you know they rolled out the first streaming service, and everybody else has been rushing to copy them. So, you know, to me, Netflix is is a stock you can sort of buy and hold. Maybe not forever. You know, there is no forever in investing, but it's it's certainly a, a stock you can buy and hold for the duration. It's, uh, it, it has the trends that it helped create, by the way. It has those trends supporting it. And I, I've, you know, the future there really is bright. AMC is a trade. Netflix is more of an investment. Looking at the, the stock chart for AMC first in, in just the last 12 months, uh, you know, obviously we saw the big run up for AMC in, in, in the summer months where it shot up about 1,300%. Uh, over that time, it is now paired back. It's cut that in half now. But interestingly enough, it's by still the way, being... kudos to any traders that, that that participated in that. You know, yeah. that was a scary stock to buy at the time, and we make fun of it for being a meme stock. But you know what? The traders that went in big, they deserve those profits. You know, they Absolutely. took a risk and it paid off for them. Absolutely. And now, and now the stock sits about 700% up from where it started uh, 12 months ago. So it's paired back about half, but it's still maintaining, uh, which is kind of interesting to see, you know, usually in a stock like this that came in extremely, uh, you know, on the ropes, close to, close to bankruptcy, uh, you know, to shoot up like that, the expectation is, is uh, under those circumstances, is that the stock would then just plummet, would just drop right back to reality and be right back where it was. Where it started. What's fascinating is, AMC has a remarkably high volatility score on our green zone rating system. And of course, a high volatility score means the volatility is low. It's backwards. High volatility means it's, 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 a, it's a, high, a high rating means it's a low volatility stock. And you see it in, in the charts. The stock has been remarkably stable for months. And that's, that's, that's interesting. You would, you would not expect that. No. And then you look at Netflix and Netflix um, is again more of that steady eddy. It, it, it did see a bit of a bump up at the first of the year, pared back a little bit, and now it has seen kind of a nice. Uh, uh, there's been some ups and downs, but by and large, the trajectory is continuing to move upward. It's about 95% up 
uh, from where it was a year ago. So um, not not bad. If you compare the returns, obviously you, you're gonna that's gonna be a bit jaded looking at the total returns uh, over the last 12 months. Right now, uh, AMC is returning about 419 uh, percent, whereas Netflix is returning about 105 percent. So there is uh, some variance. But again, when you have a big run up like. AMC did, even when they start to pair back, those numbers are going to seem high. Now, the question is for AMC, at least for me, is, is AMC going to return back to its post-pandemic, to its pre-pandemic, uh, you know, levels, or does it have the ability to maintain uh, some of the support that it's seeing um, at where it's at right about now? And, and the question is, I don't know. I, again, AMC, if you got in, uh, if you got into it when, it when it took off at the first of the year, um, I have to admit, full disclosure, I did. Uh, and I did sell, uh, not Bravo. necessarily, well, I, but you know, it wasn't a ton. It was more just to kind of dabble. Um, but it would not be one I would probably invest in now, especially not one that I'm, if I'm looking for kind of more of a longer term investment. But, if but I also, play it's stock, not I'm, one you're going, yeah, it's not one you're going to bet your retirement no, on. or it's, it's not No, 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 gonna, no. You know. it's, not, it, it's not one that's going to stay in my, my portfolio for years. Um, Netflix, on the other hand. Netflix, on the other hand, um, could be that. Um, I, I think Netflix faces some headwinds because if you look, um, you know, I, I just installed an, an Apple TV device here in, in, in my office at, at home. And, and the amount of streaming apps out there um, has grown exponentially. I mean, it used it to be has. you got Netflix and that was really about it if you wanted to stream. Well, now you have Netflix, you have Disney Plus, you've got Amazon, Amazon Prime, you've got um, all the networks now have their own streaming or their I own I wanted streaming. to watch Star Trek Discovery and I, I had to get a streaming subscription. Paramount Plus. I think, uh, Paramount, uh, really? Yeah. Like I'm going to have to get a new service just for that one show. And of, of course I did. I mean, it was worth it. Of course. It. But you know, you look. Of course, I'm, I'm going to cancel. Wife, I'm going to cancel the subscription as soon as the sh the, the season's over. But um, my my my, my wife my wife is a huge fan of Yellowstone, and Yellowstone is only available on one streaming service, not the one you would think. So you know, we you know we bought a, a, a streaming service subscription for basically a show. Now yeah. I'll try to find other. My way of thinking is I'll try to find other shows that I'll watch to get a little more value out of it than just one one show to watch. But I mean, the thing is, is that there Netflix is facing some competition. The explosion. But, well, it is. Was, but, but also, if you think about it, the price per month of most of these streaming services is less than what you would pay for a for a beer at a bar. I mean, like, oh, like absolutely. They're, they're they're extremely cheap. So and, and usually it goes on your credit card as a recurring payment. You don't even notice. We got so right. That, that five dollars a month I'm paying for Paramount. I. I say I'm going to cancel it. I'm not going to cancel. You're it. not going to cancel. I'm going to forget. Stupid. I won't remember. And then, exactly. next thing you know, three years have passed, and I'm still paying for it and never watching it. And you're so, trying to figure out what what this is. But I mean, the, the the point here is that there are there's a lot of competition for Netflix. Do I think Netflix sustains? Yes, I do. But. Um, I, I think it would be short sighted if we did not see, you know, if we did not think about other players in that streaming game. Oh, yeah. I, I let's let's flesh this flesh us out more, though. Let's flesh us out more. What, what, what do you pay per month for Netflix? Because I know there's varying tiers. And I actually on... don't. I don't I don't have Netflix. But when I did, I think it was right before the price increased to around twelve dollars a month, I believe. How do you not have Netflix? I Because I have. But how do you not go through like withdrawal pangs and like sweats? And I mean, I, I, I mean, I, I, I missed out. On, I missed out on Squid Game, which I'm kind of kicking myself for. But uh, you know, again, I've I've got you know uh, other streaming services. You said you paid about twelve bucks. You said you paid about twelve bucks. Twelve to fourteen dollars a month. I think, I think I pay fourteen or fifteen now. I don't know. They raise it like a dollar or two. It seems like every other year. Yeah. If they were to raise it to 20, 25 bucks, I'd complain, but I'm not going to cancel. You still pay for it. I'd still pay yeah, for it. Yeah, you still pay for it. Yeah, what, absolutely. What, what would be my pain point? At what point would I start to maybe push back? I don't know, 40 bucks, 50, maybe at 40 or 50, I'd, I would wonder if I was really getting my money's worth and I might say, okay, maybe I, I, I cut this. This is right. I'm, I'm offended by the price hike. I'm going to cut my, I'm, I'm going to cut it. Well, there's a long runway between whatever it is now, you know, 14 bucks to, to, to 40 or 50. I mean, that's a long runway. Netflix right. can just keep raising prices apart. So, 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 so what's the risk with Netflix? The competition among streaming services is a risk, but if you have limited budget for streaming, Netflix is usually going to be one of the top one or two you go with. I right. mean, like it's that Paramount Plus or whatever, it's going to be the one that you end up not getting because it's 
kind of marginal, right? Or Hulu or whatever. I, so these are the ones that tend to be marginal. Um, you, 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 most people, apparently you're this weird eccentric exception, but, uh, but most people are going to go with, with, with Netflix. Hey, look, and, I, I know yeah. what I like. I watch what I like. And that's, that, that's <laughs> well, an, 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 an informal straw poll though. I mean, I've, I've asked friends, you know, if, if they raised the price of Netflix two or three bucks, would you, would you care? Uh, nah, not really. Would you cancel? No. At what price would you cancel? Oh, I don't know. 20, 25, 30. I don't know. I like it. So point being, you know, Netflix does face some competition from, from other streamers. I would say not quite as much as you would think. Uh, they do, you know, they, they do face sort of um, saturation in that everybody except for you uh, already has a subscription. So who, who are they going to, who are they going to sell to, at least in the U.S.? And there's, there's overseas, of course. But even that, you know, at some point, growth really will hit a, hit a wall because it'll be saturated. Uh, and then at that point, you know, how do you raise revenues just by raising prices? Well, they still have a long runway on that as well. So, um, you know, my view here is, look, net, you know, Netflix has a long runway. Um, people have been saying it's going hit to a, hit a wall for a long time. And it will someday, but it, will. it hasn't yet. Today's not today. It's not today. Yeah, I, I think, you know, I, I agree. I, again, Netflix was just one of those things. I didn't really watch a lot on it. So, um, you know, I like the bundle. I, I, you know, the other thing I think that is, is something, and I don't want to dive too deep into this and start getting into it, but uh, to your point, it's a lot easier to say no to spending $70 at a movie theater for one night than it is to spend $20 on Netflix for a month. It's a lot easier. That's a lot easier hard pass for a lot and, of people. And it is 70 bucks. If I, if I take my kids to a, to a, to a, to a movie now, I mean, the tickets are 10 or 15 bucks a piece, which is Expensive. insane. And then, you know, they want Coke, they want popcorn, they want whatever. I mean, it's, you're paying 70 bucks for a disposable movie, you know? Right. And uh, that is, you know, so, so it kind of goes back to our point earlier, you know, the movie business is evolving into more of an event. You know, this is something you, you, you maybe only do once every couple of months for a big movie, like uh, one you've been anticipating for a long time. Right. You, know, you, you make a you make an afternoon of it and, you know, you, you go and, and it's, it's, it's like going to a concert or a, or a ball game or something. Uh, you know, that, that, that's where that's going. And, and two of the things uh, before I we, 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 we cut here, just think about when it comes to streaming, and that is original content. You're seeing, you know, companies like Netflix and Disney Plus and, 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 and Paramount Plus and all these other streaming, they're investing a lot more in original content. Uh, Netflix did a, did a really, really good job buying up uh, rights to very, very good uh, what you would call foreign television shows, whether they're based in France or Brazil or, 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 or Scandinavia or whatnot. Netflix did a great job. And of course, Disney has the back of, 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 of Marvel, of Star Wars, of, of original Disney. Products. So original content, I think, is really going to drive. It's not so much, I want to watch this show that was out 10 years ago. I want to watch episodes of The West Wing. Uh, it's not a show anymore. So now I'm going to watch it on HBO, HBO Max. Um, it's more so going to be, oh, this movie came out on, on this new Marvel movie came out uh, and they're showing it on Disney Plus. I'm going to pay money. And I'm going to watch it on Disney Plus. I think that's where yeah. streaming is going to go is, is original content. And then to that point, think about this. Now you're seeing more and more streaming companies uh, like a Disney Plus that are doing co-releases. They are releasing a movie in theaters and then they're releasing it also on streaming at the same time. Or, I think there's or maybe, you know, three or four weeks later, like exactly. within a tight window. Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, they'll put out, I think Shang-Chi was the latest Marvel movie. It came out in movie theaters. It was out for maybe a week or two. And then now, boom, it's on Disney+. Plus. It was, uh, out, for, Jungle, it was out for about a month. But so, 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 so Disney's model is to put it out pretty quickly after theatrical release. Right. Roughly three or four weeks. But then it's, I think it's generally free, generally. Uh, what's, what's, uh, so I, I never did make it to the theater to watch the new James Bond movie. So, um, I just gave up and, uh, they ended up having it on Amazon. It was an expensive rental. It was like 20 bucks to rent it, but it was, it was there. It was available. I didn't have to go anywhere. And, and you know, that, so that's kind of the model, the non-Disney model is theater first, shortly thereafter, kind of almost like pay-per-view where you, you, you pay for it online right. and it's, it's, it's an expensive price. And then a few weeks later, it drops down to like four or five bucks. So that's kind of like this multi-tier. Uh, they're still experimenting. So right. we'll see how uh, it goes. Bottom, bottom line here to wrap things up is, you know, AMC, if you want to get in short term and maybe see if this stock can rise up, would that might not be a bad idea. Uh, but if you're looking for something for a longer term investment, 
uh, then Netflix is, is going to be more of your steady eddy in terms of, uh, you know, art, entertainment, recreation type sector stocks to look at. I, I think we're both in agreement with that. So Charles, I appreciate that. I know we took a little extra time uh, this week, but uh, definitely appreciate your time each and uh, every week whenever we have you on. Uh, if you do have a question for myself, for Charles, or for Chief Investment Strategist Adam O'Dell, I do encourage you to ask that. You can do so by emailing us, feedback at moneyandmarkets.com. We're going to drop that down below here. Feedback at moneymarkets.com is the email address, or you can comment down below here on YouTube. And if you aren't subscribed to YouTube, make sure you hit that subscribe button, then match that notification bell and get notified each and every time we put out a new video, including our weekly series with Investing with Charles, as we do, as we've done right here. So we'll have much, much more coming up. So uh, definitely stay tuned. Uh, check out moneymarkets.com. That is the mothership, if you will. Uh, and uh, we have uh, content there that provides safe, sound, smart, simple, profitable investment information from Charles, from Adam, from myself, from a wealth of other uh, experts uh, in the field who uh, definitely are here to help you with your portfolio. Charles, until next week, uh, stay safe and uh, hopefully there's no more earthquakes in Peru. Hopefully not. <laughs>